What's going on everybody, it's Rev, and welcome back to another Dauntless video. Today I want to share with you my build that I've been using quite frequently in Heroic Plus Farming, as well as the last two trials uh, between Dead Eye Quill Shot and the Shroud. And the key difference of this build in comparison to other uh, very strong late game builds is that it doesn't feature Molten. Lately I found that Molten, especially in trials, is a little bit more of a hindrance than it is a uh, boon. So I like the fact that Evasive Fury offers uh, the ability to gain attack speed while not having to pick up anything. Going back to pick up Molten has caused me a lot of uh, wipes. It's caused me to miss out entirely on some damage and uh, or just completely miss my attack speed because I had to ignore the fact that Molten actually procced in an inopportune time. So Evasive Fury is always up when I need it, uh, or I can try to provoke an attack that will proc Evasive Fury. So I enjoy that a lot more, especially for Dead Eye Quill Shot. As you may have guessed, it features the Inferno's Razor with Reactive Hilt, a staple sword for any sword player's arsenal. I highly recommend making this if you haven't already. I'm working on a video currently that is going to be a build that is very, very strong at defeating Scorchstone Hellion, and so I will share that in a future video. Lastly, I'll go over all the perks in this build, which would be Conduit, which is plus 25% attack speed for 8 seconds after using your hold to cast ability. Great for party play and great for solo play as well. I've taken a liking to Conduit alongside Evasive Fury. I can really pile on my attack speed right when I need it or right after I dodge an attack for uh, maximal stacking. And so I know for the front loaded eight seconds of my Evasive Fury, I'm gonna get quite a bit of attack speed. I'm also using staple damage options such as Overpower, Predator, and Rage Hunter. A lot of people have asked me about Berserk and whether or not it's good. And that's honestly another video entirely. Long story short, uh, Berserk is not very good for the sword. I would take Predator almost 100% of the time over Berserk or Berserker. And there are a lot of reasons for that. And the main one is that you need two technique slots to make Berserker plus six. There's no armor with it. And that is a really really tough spot that um the sword has been in for a very long time where the swords that are very strong don't have the cells sockets that you need to make a build work and so i'll make another video and kind of explain it more in depth about why berserker is just not very good for the sword so stay tuned for that as well one of the really nice things about this build is that it really only features the reza helmet and you can sub out the reza kiri helmet with the Hellion helmet if you so choose. The rest, Koshai, Embermane, and again Hellion are all very very easy to acquire and it's a nice spread so you're not spending a lot of time farming all of the same stuff. With this spread of armor you can put together a solid build across multiple swords such as uh, the Boreas sword or the Valamir sword which is what I used against my trial with Shroud. I used this build with the Valamir sword this build is not a flexible build in the world, but it is still very good and offers that evasive fury option instead of molten, which is why, again, why I like it so much. As supporting perks, you have your staple etheric attunement, as well as the conditioning plus three, which if you've seen a lot of my builds, you'll see a lot of conditioning on most weapons i think that conditioning is very strong and especially for the sword a weapon that requires a lot of rolling and a lot of evasive maneuvers to proc and deal damage and you know get optimal positioning i really enjoy having conditioning uh in these builds so i highly recommend it if you haven't been using it maybe try it out if not a good alternative are stamina tonics consider bringing stamina tonics to the dead eye quill shot trial that is also a very good option to help you just not get hit and deal with some of the modifiers that are draining your stamina for the most part this is going to be a staple build that i always come back to when loadouts come out you can definitely expect this build to be in one of my top spots right alongside the build i used in the jack of all builds video 
I still use that build to this day, but the evasive fury option really has brought my trial times down. And I think that evasive fury is just a superior option than molten. And while it is less flexible with this build, I still enjoy it more. With that being said, that's going to wrap up this video. If you enjoyed it, a like would be super appreciated. If you want to see more builds and other content related to Dauntless, you can subscribe to the channel. If you want to support the channel, you can use my creator code, RevyRat, in the Epic Game Store, as well as the Dauntless in-game store. And if you want to hunt some time or catch me live, you can hit me up on Twitch with a follow to know when I do go live. My schedule is Wednesday through Saturday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you all so very much for watching, and I will see you on the Shattered Isles.